hey there YouTube, it's me barely together because my life's barely together. Um, today is yet another Draw 10 Every Day, uh, and also I'm going to be talking about this book right here, uh, called Making Comics by Scott McCloud. Um, it's a really fantastic book and shaped, whoops, uh, shaped a lot of how I draw and create stories, so, uh, I'm going to be talking about it in this video. Um, yeah. It's got a lot of cool, cool, cool stuff in it. A lot of tips and tricks. So basically, if you want to make comics, you gotta, you just gotta buy this book. Um, anyway, so today's challenge also, I suppose I should mention, is characters interacting with environments. Uh, so instead of just drawing your character floating in space, they're actually doing something. Uh, yeah, and so I'm drawing a lot of my OCs, and also just some random characters for this one. Anyways, on to the book. Uh, Making Comics by Scott McCloud. Uh, it came out, shoot, when did it come out? Uh, about 2006, so this is probably before the really big move, I think, to digital was. Um, and I didn't actually buy this book, I sort of stole it from, uh, my English teacher, uh, cause the old English teacher left, and he left behind this book, uh, and so the new English teacher was like, well, uh, I guess you could have it if you really wanted it, and I was like, yes! Um, and so this book, it tells you everything you need to know to make comics, I guess. Uh, the only thing it can't give you is the actual skill and practice uh, to do it. So, um, it talks a lot about how to, like, create stories in comic form. Like, uh, like how, what sort of, like, panels you have, what sort of, like, moves to create whether to make things big or make things small, when to have moments of more impact, um, has this really good comic they use a couple times. So this guy, uh, he walks, and then he picks up a key, and then he opens the door, and a lion jumps out. And it's all about this, like, timing, and, like, which frames of that action do you show, and how does that change the story? And then there's, like, panel shape panel size, whether you should go for like a mid panel or a big panel, uh, how to design and create characters, like what I learned from this book the most was when you create a character, you've got to give them like a central goal, like yeah they have other defining characteristics, but there's always going to be that one defining trait, and you want to like keep things varied. Do you want things to be round, tall, big, small? Uh, you can find inspiration for your characters within like common themes, like, you know, earth, wind, fire, or common archetypes. But then you can turn those archetypes on their head and like make the big, buff, strong man like afraid of a mouse or like the sort of gruff, dull looking guy, uh, really intellectual. Um, and it also gave me some really good reference for how to make character design sheets uh, to show different expressions, different angles, notes about like what they like, and like how even the character design itself can show you a lot about what the character is. Uh, to quote from the book, uh, slightly crossed eyes for a slightly flaky character, for example or a full supply of wrinkles, tailor-made for staring, or a permanent slouch for a grumpy, defeated personality. And like, that sort of stuff, and like, that sort of character design really, really influenced how I design my characters, and like, how I tell their stories. It has a whole good se section on emotions. Um, like, it talks about the six big emotions, anger, disgust, fear, joy, sadness, and surprise. Uh, and how you can combine those and like vary their intensity to make all these different ways. And you can like 
do all sorts of things with expressions and faces like you can make it really realistic or you can make it really cartoony by stretching and like pulling how things move and like you can simplify or you can make it hyper realistic and like either way you can still tell your story and it talks about like relationships between characters like personal space and body language and that's something useful whether you're doing animation or making comics and it talks about how you don't necessarily need to have the best anatomy but also it's not bad to have like good anatomy like your art doesn't necessarily have to be good or like precise or you have to have gone to art school to make an engaging and touching comic like you can have sort of like a wild crazy not very precise art style and it'll still work out and it talks about like balancing text and images and body language i've already said body language but like good stuff and it talks about how to pace your comic like when to take breaks when to split up dialogue from one panel to the next um and i'm just like flipping through this like reviewing what i learned it talks about how to make sound effects and like where they count like you don't want sound effects on every single panel but like putting them at the right spot really defines a moment and then and then it gives you all of these exercises to practice like there are so many ways that you can practice making comics that this book gives you the tools for like doing studies and like uh, this is a way to practice your background drawings. This is a way to practice your layout. This is a way to just practice making comic in general. And that's really amazing. And all of this is presented in a comic book format. Well, maybe more of a graphic novel since it's so big. Um, and like, it's accessible and easy to understand. And like, the comic work itself is really good like if you want an example of a good comic and good pacing and good like humor even it's all right in here and he talks about the different tools you can use like digital versus traditional and the merits and the uses of both of them but he also says that like none of them's right and like he talks about manga for a little bit and i was really into manga i was like heck yeah and like there's so many different sort of stories uh and he like even classifies the sort of stories that like the four crux stories i guess um the first one is like perfection and beauty and like making the art really really good that's like the classicus and then there's the animus and they're all about the emotion i guess and like putting the story and content first uh then the formalists then like that's experimenting with how you tell a comic and then the iconoclast which is telling honest stories about life and not making it pretty or pretentious or anything uh and like this book has so many treasures and i think hey if you want to be an artist if you want to make comics, or even if you just want to tell a story with pictures, check it out. Um, this is just me real quick flipping through my final images for this Draw 10 Things Every Day for 10 Days challenge. Uh, yeah. I think the one on the bed is probably my best. Just saying. Thanks for watching. See you soon.